everyone, Tom, welcome to my little man cave today. Uh, Will's got the squirts, unfortunately, so I thought I'd help him out with a bit of content and um, bring you back here to show you around, uh, go over some of the stuff that I've had in here for a little while. Will fixed us up real good uh, a couple of months ago, so we'll have a look at what we put in, what we've added. Uh, we'll go for a bit of a drive, a bit of a chat. But before we get stuck into the actual rig, I want to show you what's probably the most important part of uh, set up in this day and age of Zoom conferences and streaming and so on, and that's the background. It's the cool stuff you've got in the background, right? So let's let's just have a look, and this will actually give you a bit of an insight into uh, Will's background as well. So as you'll see here, I've put all my trophies on display so you know just how awesome I am. We like to talk about how we used to race motocross, um, like we were pretty serious and everything. But uh, as you can see from the trophies, uh, it says here, Borkham Hills Junior Motorcycle Training Club D Grade Mini 1994. Um, so we did one year of motocross and I was D Grade Mini, the lowest grade of 50cc bikes. And Will's story is not too different, except he was only racing against one other guy. So um, <laughs> Whether you call that X motocross races, I'm not sure. But it was an important part of our lives and um, something we look back on and cherish a lot. So uh, yeah, they're there. They make me happy, so I like them. <laughs> anyway, let's look at the important stuff. And I might go down to what is probably the most important and sexiest looking bit of gear I've got. But it's hidden down here, unfortunately. But just come in here and have a look at this bad boy. I hope you can see that nicely. So this is the PC build that Will did a couple of years ago. I won't go into the numbers now because that's not what I do, but links in description, it'll tell you all about it. It's pretty awesome and looks mad. The bit that makes it awesome for me though is that I can just crank the graphics right up to max every time and it's, you know, it handles it fine. So it's good. Okay, the monitor, we have a 32 inch curved screen. This is the BenQ EX3203R. If you've been on a 60 hertz screen and you move to 144, it is just a whole new world. It's amazing. So a worthwhile investment there. And then next to that, I've just got this little old cheap monitor, which I use for a leaderboard and OBS studio streaming stuff. We have the Fnatic CSL Elite uh, wheelbase with McLaren GT3 and the CSL Elite pedals with uh, load cell. We can chat a bit more about that when we go for a drive. Then of course we've got the GT Track uh, cockpit, um, which is a huge upgrade for me. Um, I was previously on a little bean bag with a rickety old table. Uh, so yeah, this is worlds apart from that. It's amazing. Um, but there is a little bit of flex in it. Um, there's a few things that could be better, but look, I'm not complaining. I love it. But how about we have a seat and take a bit of a closer look and then go for a drive and a chat. All right, in we get. Uh. <laughs> okay. Um, down here, we've got my little iPad button setup. Uh, it's a SIM hub dash that I've made. SIM hub is bloody awesome. If you've not used it, just do it. It's so good. Uh, so I've just made these little buttons here. Um, it's on a, it's, I think it's a Gen 2 iPad. So it literally can't install any apps. It's so old, but it's got Safari on it and that's all you need for SimHub. So that's, that's fine. <laughs> um, so basically I've just got a few controls here for Assetto Corsa Competizione. Um, and then some controls for the um, OBS Studio as well. Um, so it's real simple, straightforward. It's just nice to have those there. Um, now I'm a bit of an audio nerd. Um, so let's have a bit of a look at what I've got going for my audio setup. You might've noticed the little lapel mic here, which is a Rode um, Smart Lav, um, which I've found to be a really cheap option for pretty decent sound. Uh, and it's very versatile, easy to use, that kind of thing. Um, I've got it plugged into a Zoom F1 field recorder, which records to SD card, so I can chuck it on my belt pack and go for a walk and record my thoughts if I'd want to do that. Or, as I do, I record videos on my bike 
and I use this to record the audio, you can check that out on Noob Tonali. Uh, probably don't do that, it's rubbish. <laughs> um, anyway, record to SD card or plug it into your computer and it's a little audio interface. Um, so I can run this nice little lapel mic in there uh, and I've got a bit more control over the volume of it, the um, gain, uh, which is helpful rather than going straight into the onboard sound card. Um, so to get a bit more out of it though, because I like to fiddle and get more out of things, I've got this bent bit of, um, what do you call it, coat hanger. So what we do is, headphones on, coat hanger over your ear, like that. Then grab your little lapel mic and bung it on like that. There, oh, there we go. And there. It's a headset now, so it's right in front of my mouth and sounds as clear as can be. Just don't breathe on it too loud. <laughs> um, yeah, which is pretty cool because it's, you know, it's a cheap, easy way to make my nice headphones and half-decent microphone into a headset. Um, so that's really good. But it doesn't look very cool. So to solve that problem, hang on, let me reach over here. Hey, check this out. Okay. This is a vintage Neumann U87 from, I think, 1972 or thereabouts. Um, it's very, very <laughs> valuable. Uh, let me plug it in so you can hear what it sounds like. Testing. One, two. Hello. All right, so... It probably doesn't sound particularly amazing because it's 50 years old nearly uh, and probably hasn't been serviced in that time, <laughs> which they really need to. Uh, it's a very sensitive condenser microphone, which doesn't go well in a room like this. It's not a good sounding room. So it's not the ideal microphone for this setting, but it's awesome. Um, from an audio nerd's perspective, uh, this is an absolute classic microphone. Uh, it's worth a lot of money. It's not mine. I'm borrowing it to do some tests from um, my work, uh, but I really like it a lot. So I'm going to use it. <laughs> All right. How about we jump in for a bit of a drive and we'll chat about the wheel, the cockpit, um, Assetto Corsa Competizione, um, my thoughts on that, because I love it. Spoiler alert. Um, and yeah, just what I've been doing, what I've been enjoying with sim racing lately because uh, I have been having a lot of fun, so um, yeah, let's set up something in here. Stay double file. All right, let's go for a bit of a drive. We are in Assetto Corsa Competizione, uh, driving Silverstone, McLaren 720S I'm in. Um, I'm going to start at the back of the grid and just see how far up we can get. Um, what do you reckon? Top 10? Easy. I'm going to win this. I'm going to be in the lead by halfway. You watch. Go, go, go. Classic AI terrible starts. Try not to make contact. There we go. That was all right. <laughs> all right. It's always a bit silly, the start of an AI race, even with the AI turned up. But now we'll have to start making some real overtake move overtaking moves try and get a good run out of here all right we're on our way oh geez pulling away look at him go thought i had him Ooh. i was lucky i think Once we're out of this first lap mess, I'll try and have a chat about the um, Fnatic wheel that I've got in a bit more detail. Where did we get to? 12th off the start. That's pretty good. Which way do we go that way? Gee, around the outside under brakes, that was... Um, Lucky, we'll say. Mm. 
Up to 10th we go. Almost. Oh, he's still there. He's got me. Who's got more traction out of here? Me! Alright. First lap up to 10th. Out of most of the mayhem now, I think. <laughs> So, I've come from the Logitech G920. <laughs> Bit too much curb there. And look, coming to the Fnatic uh, CSL Elite, um, it's just worlds apart for me. Uh, I love it so much. I mean, the G920 is good. Um, it served me well for many years, and I had a lot of fun with it. A lot of really fast guys are still using them. Um, but for me, this has been such a cool upgrade. Uh, just the the added fidelity you get from the, the feedback um, is incredible. I just feel so much like I know what the car is doing. Um, yeah, you're feeling so much more detail in the, the bumps and uh, losing traction and all that kind of thing. Um, and I guess because so much of driving fast comes down to muscle memory, uh, you want your feedback from your wheel to be as you know as detailed as possible and consistent as possible, um, and you want it to make sense so that you can just have these instinct reactions to what is happening in the game. All right, I've got to get a good run out of here. Get him on the straight, maybe. Oh, he's quick out of there. Uh, yeah, so the... Um, here we go, come on. Oh, sorry, mate. He was super slow through there. Where am I going to get him? Can I get him in here? Yeah, you watch out, mate. That's right. Nope. Okay, up to ninth. See how our pace is compared to these guys who've got a bit of a lead on me. Um, but yeah, the muscle memory thing has been um, kind of the buzz word for me, I guess, since getting this set up. Uh, not only with the force feedback in the wheel, but um, I think the load cell in the brake pedal is um, a massive thing. It's a real game changer. Um, so basically, instead of uh, the pedal detecting where your foot is, it detects uh, how hard you're pressing it, which is what happens in real life. Um, a Formula One car, for example, uh, has very little travel on the brake pedal. Um, it's all to do with pressure. Um, muscle memory works far better for... Um, pressure than it does positions. You, your body's going to be able to instinctively um, apply the right amount of pressure much better than it can instinctively apply moving your foot to the right spot exactly. Um, yeah, so that pedal alone, uh, that's definitely something that makes you drive better, uh, more consistently at least, if not faster. Um, not to say people can't drive fast and consistently with, without load cell, but it definitely helps. Okay, how's our lap time looking? Oh, that was pretty rubbish because I had to do an overtake at the start, which lost a lot of time. I really want my race pace to be two minutes flat at most. I would like to be getting into the 159, so let's see if we can put in a nice lap here. Oh no! Oh no, keep going, keep going. That was not a nice lap. Oh, my tyres are hot and bothered now. Ah! Oh. Alright. This just became a real challenge. I'm gonna catch back up to them. 
didn't actually lose any positions though. Alright, thanks to my little sim hub dash, I can see that the guy in front uh, posted a 202.2 .2 last time round. Um, which was a lot better than my lap, but I, you know, had that bit of an incident, so... Hopefully I should be making at least a second on him. Per lap. I worry that my setup might not be being kind to my tires. I know it's still pretty early now. But I worry that I might drop off pretty bad later on. But are we 2.7 behind? What did I say? I'd be leading the race by halfway. Four minutes, five minutes. Mm, yeah. 201.2, a bit better. And we've got on to the back of this little fight where we were before I screwed up, at least. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah. You might have seen a rage quit if I had um, lost it there again. So I guess this race might not be the greatest display of consistency <laughs> you've ever seen, but um, no, that consistency that I'm getting from this uh, setup does make an enormous difference. Um, as I was saying, the muscle memory that you get um, from the quality force feedback and the load cell pedal, but also just um, in having a, a stable rig. Uh, this cockpit is um, a lot better than what I was on before with my bean bag and rickety old table. Um, so yeah, that's made a huge difference. Just knowing that you're you're in the same position each time, so your muscles learn what they're meant to do to react. Um, there's a bit of flex going on in this. I won't lie. Um, you'll notice uh, next time I break heavily. Um, you'll notice me pushing back the seat a bit. Uh, the seat does have a fair bit of flex. Um, I think the wheel does a bit too, the wheel mount. So keep an eye out on that here. Not sure you can see it too well, but it's there. And it's not that bad, but it could be better. So is it something I'm losing sleep over? No, but um, it's also not the ultimate sim rig uh, with that kind of flex. Oh no. Well, there goes the halfway challenge. All right, I guess I've gone full race length here. wasn't the most crafty attempt at an overtake. This is going to be tricky. Oh, not too bad. I 
I did find the GT track really easy to set up. Um, getting everything in the position that worked for me was was really easy. It's it's super um, uh, adaptable into different positions. I uh, you can make adjustments um, to suit your needs really well. Um, so that's quite impressive. Um, and there's holes on it everywhere, so you can add little bits and pieces as you go. Uh, yeah, super impressed with the build of that, um, just in terms of the ease of build um, and getting it how you want it. Should I go for it? No, I shouldn't. on the accelerator there, that was nice. Oh, but I changed gear too late. Come on. Come on. Gotcha. Who we got next? Lamborghini coming up, I think. If I don't give away this spot again. All right, we're almost on his tail. So Will and I have been participating in an Assetto Corsa Competizione League, which has been awesome. It's the um, Octane Online Racing League. Um, we've been doing Wednesday nights, um, and gee, they do a good job of organizing it. It's such a professional experience. It's really cool. I mean, they take it very seriously and the other drivers take it super seriously and everything which is a bit intimidating I get pretty nervous because um, I've never taken it that seriously <laughs> before but it's so much fun it's bringing out my competitive side that's for sure um, <laughs> yeah and I'm loving it you gotta just uh, play by the rules and um, join in the competitive Fun. It's all. It is really good. Um, highly recommend joining something like that. If not, um, Octane itself. But uh, that's streamed. Um, you can check that out if you want. Watch me and Will battle it out uh, on the official Octane Online Racing stream, which has um, got the full commentary and everything. Uh, which is really great. I do an excellent job of that. Um, or check it out on the Boosted Media Twitch as well. Um, and you'll hear Will and I um, having a bit of a chat too, and you can ask us some questions, join in the chat, or, um, yeah, register yourself to drive. That'd be rad. All right, I need to get him this lap. Because I've got a bit of a gap to make up to the next car as well. Stream, yes, should be. Come on, right shift again. I keep doing that. I'm gonna dive bomb him. Let's go. Oh, he's breaking quite late. I couldn't pull that off. Try something else. Oh, I've got a good run there. Yeah, as long as you're um, respecting the etiquette, the track etiquette and rules, um, you're more than welcome to join in the league. Um, there's drivers, drivers of um, all skill levels. Um, there's people still using game pads or uh, keyboards even, probably. Um, there's no rules on what you're using setup-wise or how skilled you are, just as long as you... Um, respect the rules and, and make sure it's uh, good fun for everyone.
but being in a league like that, it really challenges you to to be, um, you know, on your limit. Uh, you want to be maximising your car set up and getting practice in through the week and getting to know the tracks real, real well. Um, yeah, it's a massive challenge, which is great fun. What are we up to? Six for now. Which I guess is what got me into um, Assetto Corsa Competizione, um, joining that league. And I'm loving it. I don't normally uh, stick to the same car for so long, but I'm really enjoying getting to know this little McLaren um, intimately. And you get to understand more about the setup and everything. Um, like the physics of this game and everything are just phenomenal. And it's, you know, graphics are, are beautiful. It's just a really fun game uh, to, to delve into. Um, I love it. Okay, so six minutes to go. Three more laps, or we get four more laps. I think it'll be three more laps. And still a handful of positions to make up, and a bit of a gap between cars as well. I think I can get past these two, but the next one might be a challenge. It would be a shame. Podium would be nice. Yeah, yeah. Three wide here. Is he gonna? No, he's gonna tuck back in. And we'll tuck out. Come on, get there. Yeah. Are oh, we still with me? No, he's not. Fourth place. I can see first. There he was. What are his lap times like? 200.9, my best 200.2. So, less than a second better. So that might be a bit out of reach. Oh, it's just there though. What is he? He's five seconds ahead. We've only really got two laps left here. Yeah, two laps left. Shame. Well, there we go. We broke the two minute mark. Encouraging. So do comment if you've um, got any specific questions about the setup here. Um, if you want to go into more detail on stuff. Uh, from a technical perspective, I think Will's your man. But uh, do comment below. Chances are he's already made a video about it. <laughs> Otherwise, love to have a chat with you. We 
we might have one last lap to get on the podium. Jeez. Hit him. Okay, Oh, I think I woke my baby up. Come on, come on, podium, come on. Oh, run a bit wide there. I won't get him just yet. Not quite how I wanted to take that position, so let's um, <laughs> try and do it properly. Alright, coming to get you, mate. Down the inside, there we go. Oh, he's gonna get... Push him out, push him out. Come on. Ha ha! Gee, if it wasn't for that spin, I reckon I could have got first there. But there you go, happy to get the podium spot on the last lap. Thanks, mate. Nice. Well, yeah, do join in the chat. Um, be good to get to know you guys. Um, otherwise, might see you Wednesday night. Bye.